So um, when we actually run the application, let me see, let me get out of here. When we run this application, um, some of the text that is displayed by default is not ideal. And we can control how things display. So you see how release data is smashed together? Anytime you don't like how text displays, you can change it. Uh, but that does involve modifying your class. Uh, and the class contains the model. Uh, so we can change the appearance or we can actually change uh, the column in the table itself. Okay, And so uh, we are actually going to be doing both. We are going to be changing the way this displays. Uh, and then we are going to be making a little adjustment to our price column to the data itself. So let's save this or stop this. And we are going to go back into our solution explorer. I'm gonna close out some of these. It's really easy when you're working on these to get too many things opened. Um, now I'm gonna go back up to my model because this is where all of the change has to happen. And if I just wanna change the way something looks, I can add an annotation for that. And I can say display name and then, uh, or display, excuse me. And then in parentheses, I can say name equals. And then in double quotes, I give it the text that I want to see when I run the app. So for this, Rather than having it smashed together, I would rather see a space in there. Okay, so anything that you would like to see uh, displayed differently, you can change just using this one data annotation. Anytime you want to change something in the table itself, that is considered a schema change. So this little using statement for data annotations works for cosmetic changes, changes that will take place when you, you know, run the app and you look at the forms. Any changes that you want to the actual database table, those are schema changes, and that requires a different using statement. And this is still data annotations, but at the end we do dot schema. Okay, and it's great because we haven't used the command yet. Uh, but what we're gonna do down here for price is we are going to adjust the column. Okay, and so we are going to say type name equals and we want a decimal and the size should be 18 and two. So this is gonna make a change to the actual table itself. Let me save this. And if we look, uh, it is 18 two, but we are just going to solidify that. If we wanted to change the name, we could do that as well. Uh, but that requires a little different command. But for right now, we are just going to kind of force the two decimals. So uh, what we end up having to do is we're going to have to actually uh, add a migration. But before that, there are a couple other changes they are going to have us make. The things they want us to look at. All right, so they'd like us to take a look here at 
our index page. Uh, and these uh, little links, these are creating some links at the bottom of the page. And that's what they want us to look at. So uh, this is a tag helper. Uh, and this uh, is a link to get us to the edit, the details, and the delete pages. Okay. And all of these um, edit, details, delete require the item ID in order to display the data. So you can see that ASP route ID, and it's got at item.id. This is passing that item ID to the edit, the details, and the delete. And they have to have that in order to uh, complete their task. All oh, right, another important thing they wanted us to look at was here in the edit and in the code behind. Okay, so for the edit, again, the top part is what we've already looked at. It's creating our context for the database. Uh, here we've got a movie object uh, and we've got the bind property. So all of the entries in the form are gonna be bound to our movie class. And here is where it is expecting the ID to come in. Again, it's checking to see if it's null, uh, in which case um, it can't really return anything. Uh, and here is where it is looking for that specific ID. Uh, if it can't find it, it, we get an error. And if it does find it, then it's going to take the data, fill it in, and return the page. Uh, then down here, when they have filled in the edit page and they've made a change uh, and they submit, that's when it comes through this uh, post method. And first, it makes sure there's not errors. As long as there's not errors, then um, it is changing the entity state. It is changing this row to indicate that it has been modified. Okay, that is something Entity Framework is doing. And then it does a try catch. So it's going to try to save the changes. And if it can't, uh, it's basically uh, going to get a concurrency exception. Now, what that means is that if you are trying to change uh, data, uh, like a row that somebody else is already changing. Like two people are viewing the exact same data and trying to change it at the same time. Okay. That is when you get this kind of an error. Okay. And so, um, basically you've got an await here. So, um, it should wait until that record is available. Um, however, if somebody went and deleted it, then um, it would never be available, right? And so that is when you're checking here, uh, doesn't the movie exist? Uh, and then it would be not found. Uh, otherwise, if it does, if there's some other kind of issue, it's just going to throw an error. Okay. But I mean, typically if you are running something and you are, you know, displaying a row, now it did pick up release date. I'll just mention this because any kind of cosmetic change, it picks up immediately. Uh, what it doesn't pick up immediately are changes to the database itself. Those schema changes, you have to do an update. You have to do a migration and an update database on. Um, just wanted to mention that. Uh, so anyway, if I went in here, let's say I went into edit, and while I was doing this, somebody else 
pulled up this movie and they deleted it. Okay. And then I went to save. That is when I would get this kind of an error because now it doesn't exist anymore. It's a concurrency error. Okay. So that's really all it's saying. And I think you guys, we've talked about how the binding works already. Posting is when you submit. Okay. And so I think at this point, in order to ensure that we get uh, those changes, now the tutorial is not telling us to do this, but I'm going to have you guys do this. Um, go ahead and we will add migration. And we will call this one update price. Okay, and now if you look, there is another one called update price here. And then we will do an update database. Okay, and then any change, any schema change now is going to be in the database. And it should still run. I shouldn't have any issues with the running of the app. Okay, but now the two decimals is um, in for sure in the database. And that means that everywhere that we look at the price, it should be okay. So at this point, we are done updating pages and we're gonna move on to adding a search.